So what really is LinkedIn? When we looked at the definition of what LinkedIn was earlier, it's that professional network. Um, and in LinkedIn, you can look at basically your tr trusted professional network, and it can say how many connections you ha have, how many people are friends of friends, and how many people are friends of friends of friends. Yeah? So it gives you an idea in terms of how many people you can engage with. So from 199 contacts that we did at this time, whenever it was, I could then get access, if I liked, to 2.4 million. Gosh. Not that I would try that, I'm honest. Okay. Um, my, my main objective with LinkedIn is how do I get to these? So this is an example of the home page, uh, Red Professional one I showed you earlier. It's my home page, you've got all your menus across the top. You've got your element to post your status update. And you can see the little box here where you can actually tick there and say, I'm going to push that into my Twitter feed. If someone reads my Twitter feed, actually what it does, it brings them back to my LinkedIn profile. So what do I get? I get profile on Twitter, because people have followed me on Twitter and are reading it. But also, they then see that I've got a LinkedIn profile, so they may engage with me a little bit deeper on my LinkedIn profile. You always get the advertising on LinkedIn. People are main names, so it gives me an opportunity to connect to new people. And then this is other people I'm following down here that um, have posted recent comments. The key thing I think is to, to look and see if you've got a complete profile. I would give you, I would say that the tip is to try and get 100% profile completion on LinkedIn, but it's not, it's not life threatening if you haven't. Tony uses LinkedIn, it's not 100% just yet, is it? No. But it's not stopping you from doing business on LinkedIn, is it? So again, I would, I would say, because you don't really know what, what people are going to engage with you, it's always worthwhile getting to that 100% to make sure everything's there that they can get to. So looking at basically the profile page, so again, second one along, look at the profile. You've got some key things. It tells you the, the completeness of your profile, how complete you are. If you're not 100% complete, it's got a button under there to say, now complete the profile. It will take you through steps, what it asks you to do. It might ask you to update your expertise. It might ask you to get a recommendation, things like that. Picture. How important do you think the picture is on LinkedIn? Yeah. I believe it should be a professional head and shoulders shot that basically reflects um, you and the, the reputation you're trying to break your business. The most common phrase you tend to see in this box is director, partner, owner of. Yeah? Click on the edit and change it to what's relevant to your business. Yeah? Now, that, what's relevant to your business? Now, you can see the different areas of business that I support businesses in. Okay? So what's important from there, that's searchable. Yeah? So again, when people put that into the search engines, there's a chance that may come up. Okay. If I have a, the other thing I could put in there is what was the strap line for my business? My strap line for my business is our business is to support your business. Chapman Robinson Moores is making the numbers work. You can put those sort of phrases in there as well. If you're all, um, Stephen's a solicitor, right, with specialisms. So he may include there, solicitor specialising in. So again, all helps the, the searchability. Make it relevant, make it um, key to your keywords. And if you don't really know, know or understand the keywords of your business, just go off on the side for a moment, go to Google AdWords tool. Yeah, which is basically Google AdWords, as if you're going to set up a Google AdWords campaign. And there is a, a, a system in there, a, a keyword tool, where you can put in your phrase, phrase. so we looked at this for Chapman Robinson Moore, accountants in Oxford, and then it gave us a list of all other alternative keywords that we could be using. If I scroll down on my profile, I then come to another important stage, which is about the experience that you have. The important thing about the experience is that this is your profile, this is all really all about you. This gives me, you know, this is my background if you like. But the important thing here is write, you know, not writing in CV speak, we're not trying to apply for a job from this perspective, but writing in marketing speak. Yeah? Writing in people, what's going to engage people to want to know a little bit more about those particular roles. What's quite important um, to think about with your LinkedIn profile is the what you think is more important to your readers in terms of what's important for them to read first. So everything that's on your personal profile can be dragged and reordered. Okay? 
So, for example, if you left it in the standard, after you've got to your, your main profile, I'll come back to in a moment, you've probably got things like what groups I'm a member of, um, gives you my CV part, um, it might tell you the sort of people um, that I'm following. Actually, I don't really think that's important to the people that want to know about me. Well, I think, coming back to what I said about my LinkedIn profile, my LinkedIn profile is for a network of professionals that want, I want to refer me. Yeah? So what have I put number one after my profile? Recommendations. I think it's more important that I'm telling people that other people are recommending me rather than me giving out the sales messages all the time about how good I am. Let other people tell them how good I am. So if someone goes to my profile, they get the, the key information you get on them, any LinkedIn profile, the first thing they get is the, the, the recommendations, and then they get all the other details from them. See these bits down bottom here? Websites? What's the, what's the common phrase, the default phrase on a LinkedIn profile, do you think? My company website. Yeah? So the word my company website can be personalised. So you go into click edit alongside where it says website. Um, you drop down these drop menus, and rather than it saying my company website, you select other, and then you type in what you want that to be. Okay. Again, it's all searchable. Yeah? So if I want to search for the phrase my company website, I'll probably get thousands of responses because everybody's got my company website. Yeah? So personalise it to, to what it is you follow. You've also got the option if you want to show somebody your blog, it's right in there. And also in this additional information, you've got other, other information you might want to share with your, your followers or your, your connections. Right at the bottom of your main profile page is your contact settings. And I would recommend it's um, important to look at your contact settings because at the end of the day, you don't want to be bugged by everybody. At the end of the day, if you're not looking for a job, why have career opportunities tipped? So for example, I'm not looking for a job right now, so the only things I've got tips are expertise and business deals that I want people to engage with me. Then go to your public profile. Again, it's under the profile tab, um, where you can edit your profile. There's a couple of things I would recommend to edit in here. The first one is your URL. Again, coming back to like your Facebook username, make it relevant to yourself. <laughs> so again, this before I amended mine, this was my URL um, for my LinkedIn profile. Mike Foster, Mike Dash Foster, A A A one four three zero. You can also customise what you want to show the public. Okay, so if you don't want the public to know a certain element about your profile, because A it might not be complete, or B it's just personal and private to yourself or the people that you're linked in with, you can tick certain areas about what you want to share with them. And again, that's quite important. And it might be important in terms of condensing the information that you want to share with them. So if you look at the URL, this is before, this is after. I couldn't quite get Mike Foster, somebody had nicked that one already, but Mike Foster A1 was very relevant to my business. And that's the sort of thing that I've seen on my um, Google Analytics about my website, what people are searching for, Mike Foster A1 group. And again, you can see what I don't call my, my website to my company website, actually engaging into the name of the business that people might be searching for. You've also got the element in terms of adding your Twitter feed in there as well. So how do we get connected on LinkedIn then? Well, the first part is if it goes to the contact tab on the, on the menu, it brings up our first screen here. And I would recommend the first thing to do is to upload your email contacts. That might be from your outlook, your Gmail, or whatever email application you're doing. And actually pull all those um, contacts in, and that's why some of you get invitations to join people because they've probably done that and then pushed an invitation out to you. Okay? The reason why I say that is to start with everybody that you probably know in your outlook box is you never know who knows who. Yeah. What's the standard phrase you get when you um, when you get invited to join somebody on LinkedIn? I would like to add you to my professional network. Yeah? Not very personal is it? Does that really engage you to say, yeah, actually, I want to engage with that person, I want to follow that person? So again, when you do that, you have the facility to change that standard phrase that you might want to invite with people. And again, I'll come on to that in a little bit more detail. Once you have connected with people in your LinkedIn profile, you can actually then get them all in the list. And when you click on their name with Tony, you get details about Tony on here. Then when I click on Tony's name, I can see all Tony's connections. 
This is quite powerful now, because I can then say, okay, I know that Tony knows Gary, do I want to connect with Gary? I can actually click on connect there and it would send Gary an invitation saying I'd like to add you to my professional network. What's that like really, in reality? It's like a cold call, isn't it? Yeah? If Gary's not receiving that call from me, yeah, or he's not receiving that link, expecting that LinkedIn profile from me and he doesn't know me, is he likely to want to link in and follow me? Unless I've given a really strong reason and a real clear indication in that invitation why he should, it's unlikely he'd probably just delete that email and never connect with me. However, how can I use this tool? Well, I can use this tool in reality in terms of saying, well, actually, I'm going to meet Tony today. Let me just look at Tony's LinkedIn profile. Who does Tony know? Ah, oh, Tony knows Gary. Or would mind an introduction to Gary. So when I see Tony, I might say, Tony, I, I know you, um, you know Gary Am Ambrosini from Midas. I I'd like to get to know him. Would you mind doing an introduction for me? Tony's already connected with me because he trusts me in his professional network. Is he more likely, if I've been that direct with him, to say yes? He might say yes every single time, will he? He's more likely to say yes rather than if I don't ask the question. I say if I do use Gary that way, it needs to be a, a personal invitation to. The other way to do this is um, once you've got a connection like this. Find the connections profile, so you get something like this. And David was going to be with us today, so I was going to surprise him with his, his mug shot as it came up. But unfortunately, couldn't make it. But once you've called that up, you can actually use a tap here to say, get introduced through a connection. So rather than me going cold now, today, who perhaps, well, he doesn't know me, but he may not know me, to say, come on, link in with me, I can actually get introduced through an existing connection with mine. So I click on this link, and I get this box. It's me wanting to connect with David. And it tells me that three people are already in my network, and actually, these two surprised me, because I knew Tony knew him, but these two surprised me. I'm actually going to choose Tony, because I think he's the best person, but I could have chosen one of these two as well. Once I click on Tony's name, Tony goes into this box, and it comes up with some details here. And now I'm giving a clear reason and a strong reason to Tony, to say, Tony, if you do me a favour, will you introduce me to David? Because of this reason. And because I'm in Tony's professional network and because he trusts me, is he more likely to say yes than if I just approached him out of the blue? I would have to guess to say yes. And this really works for me in terms of growing my network. So as I said, um, when you ask for someone to connect to you or you're asking for an introduction, make sure you've got a clear and strong reason in terms of why you want that, that actually activity to actually happen. So it's a little bit like your elevator pitch in terms of, you know, if you've got one minute to describe yourself, how you can best describe yourself about who you are and what the benefits are that you bring to that individual. Okay. This is the key part. Why would they be really interested in connecting with you? What's the value for them of clicking yes rather than just someone who's building their LinkedIn profile? Because Tony's been racing me to 200 for a long time. He's, he's not quite got there. Yeah. So that's one element. The other element is, unfortunately in LinkedIn, every single time you do a connection request or a response, you have to type it for fresh. If you find something that really works for you, so a phrase that you um, push out there and actually gets people engaged with you, copy it into Word and use it each time. Or tweak it for the next one and try it again. And if it keep, continues to work, keep copying and pasting. And so you get that standard response of a request that people really engage with. Have you, ever, have you ever asked someone to engage with you or link in with you and then they've sent you an email uh, response through LinkedIn afterwards saying thanks for, thanks for linking up with me, I'd like to do some business in the future? Anybody ever got one of those messages? That's a proactive activity by the person you've linked up with. Okay, so what they've done is you, they've, um, they've, linked up with, they've asked you to link up, you've said yes, and then what they've done is they've sent you a personal message through LinkedIn to say, thanks for linking up with us, I'd like to do some business with you, and whilst, um, whilst you're there, here's some information about us. That might be some useful information, it might be including a testimonial, it might be an invitation to an event, it might be pushing you to some of your other social <coughs> media. Again, it gives you that opportunity, as I say, to keep yourself in the face of your contact. In your standard marketing, we would say that testimonials are really good for your business. 
comes back to the point that if someone else says how good you are, it's a, it's a, it's a better receptor to the, um, the prospect than you actually standing up and giving all the sales messages all the time. Okay? So LinkedIn does have a tool uh, under the profile section to make or ask for recommendations. I would say in terms of recommendations, that um, be first to give recommendations. Um, again, coming back to givers and contributors, as we talked about earlier. Um, and again, there are some common habits out there, is that someone has an email conversation with someone and says, will you recommend me on um, LinkedIn? And if you do, I'll do it for you. And that stands out like a sore thumb, because you look at your program and it's like, right, such and such has recommended me. Okay, well, let's have a look at that person. And then when you click on that person, Mike Foster recommended that person. Yeah, so it stands up like a sore thumb. At least give it a couple of weeks break in terms of uh, recommending each other. The recommendation tool is you choose who you want to recommend. Choose um, what you're going to recommend them for. So this is the role that you're going to recommend them for. Remember all those role, role profiles that, uh, that we talked about earlier. And then you've got this message at the bottom here. So if I was asking for a recommendation, this is a recommendation request, I would choose my current business, my A1 business, I would send it to um, the connections I want to get a recommendation from, and there would be, I would personalise this standard message at the bottom, this is a standard message that can you endorse me, I might not click to start with there, um, but I would actually personalise that to the people I'm sending it to. Again, giving them that strong reason to say, yes, okay Mike, I will give you that testimonial, or that recommendation. Likewise, if you go into send recommendations, you search for the person, you search for the role that you want to recommend them on, um, and then you type your recommendation. So some settings and, and awareness tips. These may be things that are hidden in the background of LinkedIn that you may not be aware of in terms of um, sharing information. On the top right hand side underneath your name is a drop down menu, and you come into your settings, and when you come into settings it opens up all your settings at the bottom. First one to look at is under the profile section in terms of select who can see your connections. So how can we share our expertise? Fourth, fourth menu along is called groups, and in groups it will give you the groups that you follow or gives you the facility to search for groups. Some of you may know the Office of Business Mentors that's um, run by Mark Jennings. Um, and again there's a lot, a lot of people following that, that group. This gives me an opportunity to share my expertise because basically what people do is they will put discussion topics through from there and I can either like it or important I can comment on them. So for example this question was the only effective way to network is don't keep score. Okay. Four people have found their expertise enough to comment on that their expertise. So it may be, again in the legal world for example, you may search for a group on your LinkedIn profile around your speciality People are asking questions about your speciality, and therefore you're making a comment on LinkedIn, sharing your expertise. People think, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about, I want to link in with that person, I want to follow that person. And again, that could be quite general for a lot of the organisations in the room. If you can't find a group that's, um, that's relevant to your business, which it would be difficult not to, but you can actually create your own group. Okay? So, for example, that's my own group, that's my own group, that's my own group, that's my own group. Okay. And what I've done is I've created groups whereby then I'm using other social media to raise awareness of those groups and bringing people I don't know into those groups. Yeah? And once they're in those groups, I can then send messages as the administrator of that group to those individuals. Again, it might be my online sales messages that I'm sending out in there. It may be that I'm creating a... Um, an invitation to event. It may be that I'm creating a discussion as the administrator of that group, but then I'm seeing the people that are responding, and therefore I'm actually listening again, and once I'm listening to what they're saying, how can I add value to that individual? Also, where can you show your expertise? In LinkedIn, under the more section, there's a questions and answers, or not, it's called answers, but it's question and answers. People post general questions on there. You can categorise it in terms of sections. Okay, so for example, Tony's business may be looking in the finance and accounting area to see the sort of questions people are asking about finance and questions, and then adding value to that question that person is asking. Because it doesn't only add value to the person who asked the question, it adds value to anybody else who looks at that question and says, yeah, I've got a similar question to that, I might as well read that one. 
And again, a great tool for particular areas that fall into these areas. So finding new contacts on LinkedIn. Again, on the board, there's an events tab. Okay? This is where you can add your own events, but also you can do a search for events that have been posted in your local area. So again, this is one of the ways you can find local people. If you like. This was an event that was happening at the Sam Stadium, happening at Whitney College. What was the benefit of knowing about that event, do you think? Who do I want to target at that event before I go? Because any networking should be there with a purpose, unless you just like wine or breakfast or whatever it is. Okay? So now I know who's going to those events, who do I want to go and um, speak to, who do I want to introduce myself to, and who do I want to um, hear about their business to help me and my clients. So that's before the event. After the event, it may be that I met John at the event. Yeah? So now, actually, I met John at the event. I didn't get a business card off him or anything, but now I'm going to link in with him. I'm going to send him an invitation. It's good to meet you at the plunge event. How about linking up? Again, we can go through groups. So again, through your groups in terms of finding connections. Once you're a member of a group, you can see that this office of business mentors has 105 at the time I looked at that. But now I can engage with all these people because we have something in common. Yeah. I can make a contact to Grant. Well, you see these numbers on the side here? When it says first, they're already in my network. If it says second, they're friends of somebody in my network. If it says third, they're friends of friends of somebody in my network. Okay. So obviously I don't need to speak to Grant to connect with him. But if that said second, I can send an invitation to Grant saying, Grant, I see you remember the Office of Business Mentors. I think you're making some real good value in terms of the contribution you're adding. I'd like to know a little bit more about you. Do you mind linking up and then we'll, do, we'll put an appointment together? And then right at the top, it's always on every page, is the, is the search facility. And the three main ones I would say to search from here is people, companies, and group. Once you have done a search on somebody, you've got the advanced search tool where you can really drill this down. So again, coming back to your local contact question, Andy. <coughs> in terms of you can actually search down, um, you search on names, on keywords, on location. So for example, a search we did recently at Chapman Robinson Hall, we searched for dentists because of our healthcare specialism. Um, search for dentists within 10 miles of OX5 1JE, which is the office poster. That brought up a list of dentists that we can now target, contact, connect with if we wanted to, either through LinkedIn or directly. So again, here's a dentist practice that we might want to work with. I particularly know that Nicola Dinsley is a dentist there. So if I'm doing some direct mailing um, outside of LinkedIn, I know I can address that to Nicola rather than the owner of so again, if you've got specific sectors or um, businesses that you're targeting for your client base or for your customers, then uh, it's, a, it's a great tool. And you can tweak that. Once you've done the search, you can tweak it. Once you're happy with the criteria, you can then actually save it onto your LinkedIn profile. And then when the next dentist in that area joins LinkedIn, you get an email message saying this person's just joined LinkedIn. So things are happening automatically for you without you thinking about it. As I said, it's all about engagement, so how do we use LinkedIn to engage? Well, we've got, as I said earlier, on the home page, we've got our share update screen. This is where you share your update. And again, um, it, it is limited, but it's not as limited as, as Twitter. You've got the aspect of ticking this box if you want to put it into your Twitter feed. Remember, if you're going to do that, 140 characters are the ones that are going to show on Twitter. So make sure you've got your hook, your reason to read that message in those first 140 characters. What's quite nice about LinkedIn is you've got the ability to attach the link. And when you attach a link, so say for example you want to drive people to your website, because at the end of the day for me social media is about driving people to the detail on my website. Okay? When you attach the link, it puts a box underneath it with the link in it, making it really obvious it's a link, rather than you know, some of these hyperlinks that sometimes you don't know that you've got a hyperlink until you run the mouse over it. Yeah? This is obvious, it's there, bang, right on your face. And actually, if you've got a, um, a visual on your website, a photo on your website, it will put that photo on there, and you can actually choose which thumbnail you want to show. Okay, so for example, if you were using it for your imagery, for example, and you were saying your website, you might pull one of the images that you've got on your profile, and you can say, actually, that's the one I want to share for that, that post that I've mentioned there. There are business pages. Um, Again, quite new to LinkedIn, um, this is a business page that, uh, that I have, um, but again, the reason why we've set them up is that they're all searchable. So some tools and resources that you can use with your LinkedIn or your social media, particularly with, social, uh, with LinkedIn, 
Again, if you go to that more menu at the top, you can come down to uh, training resources. And in training resources, it gives you some background about uh, the detail behind LinkedIn, how you can find out specifics, a little bit like a knowledge base, if you like. But also, these are webinars that you can sign up to. So if you like to watch things rather than read things, again, um, LinkedIn are very advanced in terms of giving training. Because at the end of the day, they want to encourage people to use their, use their platform. If you go right down to the bottom of your page, you've got a few things to choose from. If you choose tools, it gives you a few options. The first one is the ability to download um, your, your mobile app, something for your iPhone, your Blackberry, or whatever smartphone you may be using. Generally speaking, people will tend to download the apps on their phone directly. You can do it round round this way as well. And that's an example of how the um, app looks on an iPhone, for example. I find, personally, the LinkedIn app on my iPhone easier to use in the desktop in terms of quickness and posting, etc. But if I really want to get behind the details and the searches, etc., it's best to come onto, the, onto your desktop. You can also add integrate your output with LinkedIn. Yes. Also in that more section there is a number of applications. I won't cover all the applications because there's quite a few of them there. But again, if you've got a blog, you can actually link your blog so it shows on your main profile page. So again, one of the reasons you're writing a blog is you want people to read it, so try and publicise it everywhere. Um, so again, my blog is quite high up on my profile page. Um, you've got the events element, so you can add your events there. And if you do a lot of PowerPoint presentations, um, SlideShare is a good, good application you can put there. So you can upload your um, PowerPoint presentation to SlideShare and then you can share it on your LinkedIn profile and people can actually in effect watch your PowerPoint presentation. 